Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Ch -ch -ch changes at VCA. Also, the V-Team takes a look at different laws with different rules. And Governor Bentley's girlfriend fun is back in the news. No, it's not going to stop. It's going to go on and on until you face up to your responsibilities. What responsibilities? Kay Ivey says she's cleaned up Robert Bentley's mess. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, all this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the V-Team. Welcome all. Chip's home. Hi, glad to be yeah. back. Finally. Welcome back from D.C. Yeah, glad to be back. Yeah, you have a good time? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Glad to be back down here, back in the 100% humidity instead of 95. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> At least you're not in the swamp. Yeah, I got in sure. the swamp. Yeah. He was gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alabama, uh, Montgomery calling Washington the swamp. Uh, uh, that's our pot no. calling theirs black, right? right. Uh, I mean, I'm just a, talking about the mosquitoes and the. Mm, yeah. It actually was a swamp at one time. It was. And Montgomery still is. <laughs> it still is. <laughs> Much worse. Yeah. Uh, you know, for basically for the last year, BCA, the Business Council of Alabama, had been warned by us and others that the behavior by its CEO and president, Billy Canary, was unacceptable. It was hurting the state. It was hurting BCA. It was doing a great deal of harm. Uh, we are happy to announce a week or so ago that Billy Canary was ousted from his position. And now, Josh, we have learned that, m much to everyone's surprise, Alabama Power, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Regions Bank, mm -hmm. a lot of the big superpowers in Alabama have come together. BCA has rewritten its guidance and, and, and rules, and now we have a new executive committee, a new structure at BCA. Yeah, you know, I, I don't necessarily think it was a, that big of a surprise. I mean, they were, they were, this was where the money came from. I mean, you know, yeah. when you thought of BCA and, and the funding that came to, you know, to do the lobbying work that they do, uh, those are the guys that, that put in the most money into the pot to do the lobbying. And so when they started to walk, I never understood what was taking place here. I never, I never understood the backing of Billy Canary over <laughs> these guys. I mean, what, I mean, what are you doing? And, you know, I mean, if you're looking to influence people in Montgomery, uh, you kind of need these people that influence people in Montgomery with the money. And, you know, it, I never thought that this was going to end any other way. Maybe Alabama Power Regions and some of these folks would, would form their own company if these folks at BCA didn't wise up. But I kind of always thought that the business people in the state would look at this as a business decision and they would come around at some point. Well, I mean, Billy Canary fought to the very last minute, the last ditch effort. Susan, I think there's still people at BCA that would be okay with Billy Canary being there if Alabama Power and Blue Cross Blue Shield and all them would have kept their money in. Absolutely. To the point that at Point Clear, I understand he was down there shaking and greeting people as they came to the, the BCA conference down there. They awarded him a medal. They did, you know, this big, you know, oh, bye, Billy Canary, we're going to miss you kind of video. I'm like, what Jesus, What was it, like people. a medallion of, There was a medallion uh, you know, that he was presented. Of, medallion, I'm I don't, a loser. Uh, it was like yeah. a Flavor Flav kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what I think. But, I mean, Chip... You know, we've all reported on this. It was a big deal. They really democratized BCA like it never before. You know, the CEO and the chairman had all the power. Mm -hmm. Now the power rests with the executive committee, 11 member board. Yeah, and so what we're seeing is a lot of those companies that you're mentioning are coming back in and are members of this executive committee right. that are really going to be guiding the organization through this transition. And like you mentioned, they had to make this decision when you're at risk of losing your top seven contributors. 
uh, and you don't know how much operating income you're going to have in a year, and you have to make a decision. Well, Susan, you 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 you've done a lot of accounting in your life. We we learned this week that under Canary's leadership, this over this last few months, they took one point six million mm -hmm. out of the, the their trust fund. Mm -hmm. They didn't borrow it. They mm -mm. took it. They took it and spent it. And remember, I told you guys back several months ago when he and Perry, Billy Canary and Perry Hand came out and said, well, you know, they may have, the Big Seven may have left, but we've still got a year's worth of operating capital. A year. And, and as an accountant, yeah. I went, what? You only have a year's worth of operating capital for that size of an organization? Yeah. They have got to be in serious trouble, and apparently they were. Look, there are not companies in Alabama, once you consider all of the ones that were leaving, Power South, Alabama Power, BCBS, there are not companies in Alabama that are members of this that could have sustained the thing mm -mm. if they had left. Yeah. yeah well, I think right. Billy Canary was determined to get PCI in there, and I think that may have been the final yeah. straw. Well, that 30, Robbie McGee winning by 31 votes out of 1,200. That's kind of hurt. Josh, that didn't look that good no, for him, did it? It didn't. It didn't. And it, I mean, but that was not really on the, on, with the tribe there, you know, on the reservation. That was not really out of the ordinary for, for that, for him. You know, there's a big split among some of those folks there, and he has just enough votes to get over the top. And, you know, I, I, and I'm with Tip. I, it just... They, it never made any sense when you looked at it from a business standpoint. This is what I've said all along in this. I mean, this was the whole thing was about business. Yeah. They, Canary wasn't getting the job done. Canary wasn't moving the needle on, on stuff in this state for the business community. And it was time to make a change. And that's what they wanted out of this. And it wasn't specific to Alabama Power or any other group. It was about what was taking place here not in the right. hallways. And not only were they not getting anything done, they were alienating people, yeah. too. When your mm -hmm. whole job is to go into the state house, make friends, and get legislation passed, and then you're going in there and you're pissing people off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I think, I think the, the, something that is important here is that now we, they have shifted from the CEO and the chairman having all the power of the decision mm -hmm. They've reversed that back to the executive committee now. And the executive, so we, won't, we won't have that Yeah, the executive committee doesn't have like 300 people on it that Billy Canary lies to. Exactly. It's 11 of the top CEOs in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the state. state. Huh? You're not going to push them around. No, no. you're not going to push. I think but Mark Crosswhite, uh, CEO of Alabama Power, if he had not have stayed strong and steady mm -hmm. and kept pushing and pushing and pushing, uh, it would not have happened. Uh, these other guys stuck with him, but he, he really pulled this thing off, uh, backed by a lot of great folks. And uh, we, we, can't, we, we put a few body blows in there for ourselves. Uh, but I tell you, one, one of the things that they're going to have to figure out is all this extraneous nonsense, Josh, mm -hmm. like this business and education mm -hmm. and all these crazy things that BCA has been doing that have nothing to do with business. What, what, is that, that, what are they doing in in education. Yeah, you know, you know some, some of it you, you just kind of look at it and, it and it seems like a waste of money, yeah. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, others, you, you kind of, you could kind of see a long term, maybe a payoff at the end of it. But, you know, it was, you had to jump through so many hoops, you just didn't understand how they were ever going to get there. Yeah. And I just don't, I don't, I think a lot of those programs are going <laughs> to go by. Yeah, uh, and, and they're so, going to have to well, do a wholesale it, house cleaning. Yeah. But the business and education more had to do with biting at uh, AEA. You know, yeah. some of this, this back channeling yeah. of stuff. And, and it has all nothing that to, to do go. with business. No. We're, we're going to have to leave it right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news and opinion. You'll never guess what 400,000 people in the U.S. were using when they crashed their cars last year. No, not this. This. Distracted driving will kill you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Autism has touched the lives of so many here in Alabama. It's why State Senator Tom Watley stood up to the special interests and sponsored the bill requiring insurance plans to provide autism therapy to those in need. Because Tom Watley knows this therapy can and does change lives. And Watley was recently recognized by the Autism Society of Alabama for his work helping the autism community. Putting people before politics. Tom Watley. 
two-thirds of drivers who died in car crashes chose to ignore this warning. <laughs> Seatbelts save lives. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Chip, this week, Robert Bentley's girlfriend fun is back in the news. Spencer Collier has his ongoing wrongful termination suit, and now they want to compel Governor Robert Bentley to say what kind of money went into ASCOV, mm -hmm. we affectionately call the Hoochie Mama Fund or the, <laughs> the uh, Mud Cricket Fund. In other words, they used it to pay his girlfriend. Rebecca, yeah. 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 Rebecca makes them. Alleged. Alleged. Yeah, alleged girlfriend. Well, this is hands. just, yeah, this is just another one of those, uh, you know, Pandora's boxes that we're trying to figure out everything that's inside of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so, yeah, I know. Says it, you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already got, we've already got all of this information from this lawsuit, we've got all these depositions, yeah. and now if we can get this information about who was paying into AceGov and who was paying yeah. in to pay Rebecca Mason, there's no telling what we could find. Yeah. Well, I mean, Susan, the thing is, is this this could be embarrassing on a number of levels for mm -hmm. some big players. We know that Bentley Bentley is not affiliated with this group other than he benefited mm -hmm. from it, but and, and there's nothing to keep him from testifying about what he knows. Right, he doesn't get any kind of special wall that he can hide behind, like 501c4 or 527. Um, he has knowledge of who he raised money from. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Haney was one of them, mm -hmm. that he's already said that in there. And apparently that's the only one he can remember. <laughs> yeah. Really. Yeah. But they're asking for his knowledge of who donated money into this fund. Because the fund was essentially to pay Rebecca Mason's. Yeah, I mean, but the hundreds piece. of thousands of dollars, it sounds like, went into this fund. And we don't know. It was started by... Then Bentley's chief legal counsel or legal counsel, Cooper Shattuck, mm -hmm. who just disappeared off the face of the earth all of a sudden. But <laughs> Bahamas, uh, right? yeah. I mean, Josh, there could be any number of embarrassing things in there. Yeah. And Kay Ivey could end this all tomorrow, but she chooses not to. Yeah, I, I'm going to say that if there was ever a point in this where it was more likely than not that this was going to be ended, I would think this would be it. Because, you know, the people who donated to that fund... Uh, who have tried desperately to remain hidden behind this wall. And they have remained yeah. uh, desperately hidden behind this wall because they don't want to be tied to Bentley. They don't want to be tied to this deal that set up that paid uh, Rebecca Mason. Uh, they don't want to be tied to any of these things are about to be exposed because there's no chance that Bentley doesn't know who these people are who paid into mm -hmm. this thing. Because while he was not on the board and was not directly tied to it, he was benefiting from it, and it was set up specifically for his administration, right. and they knew full well what was taking place here. So sure. these people are going to be exposed, and if they are some of the bigger players as we suspect that they are, they do not want that to happen. And I'm going to guess that they wield some influence over the current governor and some of the current legislators who are out there, and this will... I would guess it would be shut down pretty soon. Well, I mean, all Kay Ivey has to do is to agree yeah. to some reasonable terms with Spencer Collier, which they indicated before she took office that they would. And this thing has been gone on for a couple of years yeah. and run, ringing up $300,000 or plus, plus in taxpayer paying legal fees for Robert Bentley. And we have a suspicion, all of us sitting at this table, we pretty much know who the ones were who donated to that. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting for that one last confirmation before we let the world know who they were. Well, and, and, you know, it'll be very embarrassing, but evidently, well, you, know, you know, the, the governor keeps saying she cleaned up Robert Bentley's mess, and then he parades her out. Mm -hmm. They paraded out the girlfriend of fun again. She Boy, it would be a shame if she didn't stop that and they started donating to her opponent. Yeah. Shouldn't expect anything less than embarrassing out of this series. <laughs> you really should. I know you really should. <laughs> no doubt. Uh, no doubt. I, so, I, mean, I, I wonder if they're even keeping her informed that this is going on. I don't know. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Clinton Carter left, the, the director of finance, great guy. Uh, they are bringing in, uh, where they're actually just temporarily allowing his assistant or associate assistant, that's what he was called, or mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. assistant finance director, uh, Kelly Butler. To step up, uh, uh, Susan, what we're hearing is that she, Governor Ivey, wants yeah. young Boozer in there, and mm -hmm. she's 
waiting until after the elections, after the, uh, the swearing in to bring young Boozer on. Yeah, that's what we're understanding coming out of the sources we have in and around the Capitol is she really wants young Boozer in that position. Um, but, of course, he hasn't finished his term. The election's not until November. Uh, I believe it's John McMillan that's going to replace him as treasurer. Right. Uh, so they've essentially put this person in place just until I can get around to that. Josh, you know, I don't know that this is true, but I sense there's a fight on the horizon with RSA, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dr. Bronner mm -hmm. and Young Boozer and Kay Ivy. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, you know, they, they have been trying for some time to get their hands on the, the public money that's gone into the retirement funds there. Uh, you know, Bronner has been, uh, has handled that fund for a number of years. And I think by most unbiased judgments, they would say he's done a good job with that. Uh, you know, all, over the course of the years, there have been some criticisms here or there of things, but they have mostly been minor when compared to the amount of money that the man is moving around and trying to invest. And so I think anyone who looked at it objectively would say he's done a pretty good job. But they have taken shots after shots after shots at him to try to get their hands on this big pile of money. And I think this is the latest in that kind of salvo there, is to try to move in on that money and try to divert it into sources. And, you know, no matter what you think of Dr. Bronner and what he has done, let me assure you, the money with him is much oh, better gosh, off yeah. than it would be with these people handling it. Okay, well, and, and look absolutely. at the Raycom deal, for instance, that just that they just did. I believe he ended up getting ten times what he expected to get out of it, yeah. and just took the money away. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, uh, David Bronner has stood in the gap mm -hmm. and protected retirees' money all these years, mm -hmm. and if they think that. The Republicans have stopped going after the retirees' money. Yeah. They're silly. No. <laughs> Does it make any sense? No, it, it never has. And if, you, and if you want some sort of judgment on this, don't take anybody's word for it. Just look around the state yeah. at how the money has been invested and used and the things that have been wasted and the dumb things that have happened and the corruption that has existed. And then look at the big pile of money that has set in that retirement fund for decades now that has been managed by him. And I don't, has anyone ever claimed any level of corruption no. at all no. of no. any sorts uh, or, or that it has been any way misused or no. mishandled? No. No. Well, and, and, and listen, I'm not telling people to vote Democrat, but I'm saying if you really, you need to vote for someone who promises you mm -hmm. they're going to protect your retirement. Yes. And these people that are in office right now are not going to protect no, your retirement. No, they're not. We're going to have to leave it there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back with more news and analysis. You'll never guess what 400,000 people in the U.S. were using when they crashed their cars last year. No, not this. This. Distracted driving will kill you. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. The Energy Institute of Alabama promotes reliable, affordable, and clean energy to help grow our economy create high-paying jobs, and build public support for Alabama's energy industry. Access to clean, affordable energy continues to be an issue of vital importance in the halls of government and around the kitchen tables across our nation. The Energy Institute of Alabama is the best source of energy industry information and how it affects households across the state from convenient energy production to alternative fuels to solar power and beyond. Two thirds of drivers who died in car crashes chose to ignore this warning. <laughs> Seatbelts save lives. Drive safe, Alabama. A message from your Alabama Department of Transportation. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Uh, you know, we, we finished that up. I wanted to finish where I said, you know, we're not encouraging people and saying that they just need to let the retirees, mm -hmm. which there's hundreds of thousands, you know, mm -hmm. should let these people know 
leave our retirement fund alone. Vote for your interests. Yeah. That's all you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody else is. Go and figure out who is going to protect your interests and vote for those people. Yeah. I, that's all. Well, that's all I, anybody ever asks. And I say this to segue into this next segment. Susan and I uh, dropped by. We covered the uh, Walt Maddox fundraiser here in Montgomery mm -hmm. last week. Uh, Chip, there were about five, six hundred people there coming and going on. A lot of young people. A lot of not the not the old style politicos, but a lot of young people. There's a lot of enthusiasm. With the five to six hundred people present, they raised over a hundred thousand dollars that evening. I mean that that's surprising. Just imagine four or eight years ago, if we would have been sitting around talking about a, a Democratic governor candidate for governor who's raising that much money and has that much enthusiasm behind them. You know, I don't know what to say. That That's surprising. And I think we're moving into somewhere where even if Maddox doesn't win, he's helping rebuild the party in the state, right. which is which is a good thing. But I think, Susan, I think what, what we you and I talked about was that there was that an excitement. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, he got up and said, I'm pro-life. Mm -hmm. I'm pro-business. Mm -hmm. I'm pro-expanding Medicaid. Mm -hmm. I'm pro expanding education. I'm pro. He talked about what he was for. Mm -hmm. You know, we've heard a lot over the last uh, eight years of what they're against. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think for a lot of people, it was exciting to hear somebody who had a, a pro-growth, pro, growth, pro uh, you know, Alabama message that, but articulated in such a way that you actually didn't feel like they were lying to you. You know, the most exciting thing to me about it, he has a plan. Not just, I'm against everything, and that be your plan. He has a plan for how he wants to do all of these things. He, like you said, is progressive. He's moving in the right direction. And i got to tell you, that's a lot of money for a Montgomery fundraiser. Mm -hmm. According to all the people that we know that have been doing this for years, raising money in Birmingham, not a problem. Raising money, large amounts of money in Huntsville, not a problem. In Montgomery, that was a statement that he raised that much yeah. money. And they're not all Democrats either. No, right. they're not. They're not. And, and Josh, I think one of this is... And I agree with him. Is look, Walt Maddox, if he was in the Northeast, would be a moderate Republican. Yes, he would. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the thing is, we've got to get beyond this R and this D in our state. If not, we're just going to keep moving backwards. But yeah. I, what I was so excited about is to see uh, people enthusiastic about it, about a young man. Yeah. I mean, baby boomers don't want to vote for anybody that's younger than them. And so we keep ending yeah. up with 70 year olds in office. And it's just kind of goofy, really. Yeah, it, it is. And, and, you Nothing know, against 70 year olds, but hey, no, but you, it's, we're it's, all going to wear it at some point. Right. And what's what's kind of disappointing more than, more than anything about the, the R&D sort of thing is, is that what you do when you do that is you end up giving people a pass who mm -hmm. have no plan. Right. And, you know, and I would challenge you now, go to, go to Walt's website. Go to Kay Ivey's website. Look at the difference in the in the plans and then the in the responses that are there uh, towards the problems that we actually have. And everybody knows the problems now that we actually have. So look at those plans and tell me who is going to solve them. Why would you vote for the person that actually has a workable plan to solve these things, other than the person that just keeps showing up and cutting ribbons? Uh, you know, and that's where we are right now. Now, if Kay Ivey comes out with these great plans and they start working through some problems, well, then we can, you know, kind of go back on this and take another look at it. But as of right now, she doesn't. Uh, she refuses to debate anybody. She won't even just go out in the public and talk to people about what, what her plans are. Well, for seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, yeah, the seven-minute well, time limit. Well, we invited things. Kay Ivey to come on our show mm -hmm. with a live studio audience. Not, we would be like a show, but it would be like a public forum, mm -hmm. a, there would be no debate. Student audience would ask her questions. She would answer them. It would be moderated. Yeah, just so it kept it on track. Mm -hmm. But just give her a chance to speak, you know, unfiltered for an hour to the public. Mm -hmm. They were very graciously told me, and the horse I rode in on. Yeah, well, they're going to keep going and open up interstate bridges. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, really, that's what she did this week. She went to an oh, interstate she's bridge done opening. For months. An interstate bridge opening. That's where she was this week. Do you have to really open an interstate? No. Don't you just back the cones up and people fly through? I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, it's an interstate bridge in a Walmart distribution center. That's what she's done this week. Well, there you go. Well, I told him. I said I read, I mean, I read the schedule. There's plenty of time. Seven minute but, appearances. But anyway, I want to get to this. We only got about two minutes left. Josh, you did some reporting this week, outstanding, where you show that if you're a Republican and you fail to follow the Fair Campaign Practice Act, <laughs> 
Not a problem. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Just some paperwork you forgot to do. But if you're a Democrat, yeah. you're in some real hooey. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really, it, it, it seems like we're back to... 2002. We're, we're not in 2018 any longer. Yeah, you know, it, it, this is all surrounding the, the law that requires candidates to file statements of economic interest. You know, to show and, where the, what they where, yeah, what what, their personal income exactly, is. Exactly. Personal income, what their debt is. Yeah, yeah, you know, all this, which is very important. And, and it's so important that we have put together this list of laws that make it a requirement. And if you don't do it at the same time that you file your paperwork to run, they kick you off the ballot. Yeah, that's the, the, that, that's the law. That is one hundred percent the law. Kick, you off the, yeah. kick yeah. you off the ballot. There's no pass and go or anything else. But they have suddenly come up with these alternatives. One of which is a five dollar a day fine, which they've made up out of thin air. Thin air. There is a ten dollar fine for people in office per day that don't do this, but not for candidates. What they have done is completely fabricated this out of, and it's. it's it's insane. And at the same time, they've kicked two Democrats off the ballot for doing the exact same thing. And it's just how people are not outraged about, about it, the unfairness of it. And, and I mean, I understand the, the, the biases, the political biases. I, I get all that. But I mean, when you look at it, most people are at least fair-minded. Yeah, and I mean, the problem not, I have is hey, like, wait a minute. You, you, you got laws to keep people <clears throat> honest. But if you keep going, ah, well, that's my buddy. That's yeah. fine. You know, it's a piece of paperwork today. Yeah. It's a million dollars. Why money. have yeah. the Let's... law in the first place? Just take it off and do whatever the heck you want to. Because that's every what they're week. doing. We talk about this every, thing, every week. Why are we surprised? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just a Well, we have to be outraged about <laughs> something. <laughs> I'm mad. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a sham, though. You know what I mean? It yeah. really is. And and when, if you're going to do it with this, you'll do it with something else. Yes. Well, they do you know? it with FCPA reports all the and time. They, yeah. they, they get, the Secretary of State goes in there. They get all the fines up. Mm -hmm. They go to Ethics Commission. Ethics Commission goes, ah, it's not a big I deal. Mean, just just wait those fees. It's so important to know what you have investments in as a lawmaker because of what you're voting on. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Well, it's almost we, like getting the taxes for a presidential candidate. Well, it's something yeah. that you need to do. Yeah, you need to know. <laughs> it, 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 it. But you know what? It's a shame because these are the laws, and if you bend the law for your buddy today, you'll break the law for yourself tomorrow. I know that. We're going to have to leave it right there. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. This week, we lost the great lady of soul. The Queen herself, Aretha Franklin. She will be missed.